Medieval food is often very splashy, but sometimes kind of hard to make. The 13th century cookbook, Scents and Flavors, has several dishes which are not only really complex and flavorful, but very easy to make. The ones I'm gonna be showing here are tabikh thum, which means the dish of garlic, and the other is tabikh habruman, which means the dish of pomegranate juice. To make the dish of uh, garlic, you need two pounds of ground meat. In the Middle East, this would be ground lamb, but it works very well with ground beef. And a bunch of cilantro, also called coriander leaf, and a head of garlic. And then the usual medieval spices, coriander, cinnamon, and clove. Take the cilantro and you mince it very fine. Mince up the whole bunch. and put four tablespoons worth on top of the meat. And now you start adding the garlic. Take your head of garlic and separate off two cloves and peel them and mince them. Garlic cloves are kind of tough and they're hard to take off. What I like to do is just take something heavy like a mug and pound it so that it uh, cracks the peel. That makes it a lot easier to get the peel off. When you've got the two cloves peeled, mince them, or you can put them through a garlic press. And put them on top of the meat. Then you add your spices, a tablespoon of coriander, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter of a teaspoon of cloves. I'm mixing by hand the medieval way. If you want, you can put it in a uh, electric mixer with a paddle attachment or the uh, dough hook. But this will happen pretty fast, uh, maybe two minutes before everything is mixed. Uh, one of the reasons you want to sprinkle the cilantro and all the ingredients on top of the meat is the cilantro is easy to see and it gives you a good idea whether everything is getting thoroughly mixed. That's pretty good. Now, you still got the rest of this head of garlic. You're going to want to separate it into cloves and then peel them. Set the peeled garlic cloves aside with the rest of the cilantro. I should perhaps warn you that if you crack the garlic, you can have a more strong garlic flavor in the resulting dish. Then add salt to taste, one and a half to two teaspoons, and mix it in thoroughly. Uh, take the meat and divide it into meatballs about the size of walnuts. From this quantity of meat, you'll get about 24 of them, and rather than try to get the right size with each meatball as I go, I divide the meat into three equal parts and then divide each part into eight by cutting thus we. And so each of these will make one meatball. Just roll them in your hands like this. Transfer them to a bowl as you go. And go ahead with all the rest of the meat. Put a roomy frying pan on the heat and add about a quarter inch of oil. Heat it over high heat until if you put a little piece of meat, it'll immediately start to sizzle. Then start cooking the meatballs in batches. It'll probably be three batches. Since you're cooking over high heat, they will cook pretty fast, so keep stirring them with a spatula. You want to get them good and brown on all sides. Now pour off most of the oil and return the meatballs to the pan and add the rest of the cilantro and the whole garlic cloves. Then add water to just barely cover the meatballs and boil furiously. The medieval recipe says to boil until all the water boils away and the meatballs start frying in the fat. Actually, the meatballs are as done as they need to be after 15 minutes. And so for convenience, I take the meatballs out at that point. It helps me to keep track of how the pan juices are doing. You want them to boil down and get thick, but you don't want them to dry out. 
Then return the meatballs and stir them around in all the juices. The medieval recipe says the oil has an especially good flavor, and I agree. The dish of pomegranate juice is one of the splashiest medieval dishes, also one of the very easiest to make. You're basically just making a highly flavored sauce of almonds, pomegranate, and mint. First, take your two cups of almonds, put them in a food processor, and process them until they're very smooth. The time that they're done is that uh, a liquid oily layer will start to appear at the bottom of the bowl. Then add about a cup, half a cup to a cup of minced mint, half a cup of sugar, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and two cups of pomegranate juice. Now, pomegranates are seasonal and if they're out of season, you can use a magical ingredient available in Little Eastern markets. It's called pomegranate molasses in English. Uh, dips Roman in Arabic, Robi Anar in Persian, pe Nar Pekmezi in Turkish, Nar Sharab in Armenian. And it's sweet sour pomegranate juice boiled down half. So if you add the equal amount of water, you'll have reconstituted pomegranate juice. So I'm going to pour a cup of this stuff, which is really luscious, into a two cup measuring bowl. Then add a cup of water. And process it. The dish is basically done. Uh, according to the recipes, you can uh, cook a chicken in this uh, sauce. You would do that by cutting it into serving pieces, legs, thighs, divide the breasts into four, and the wings, and then put it in a frying pan, um, maybe with a little extra water because it's going to be have to simmer for about an hour. Or you can just mix the sauce with an already cooked chicken. I, I went down to the supermarket and got an already cooked chicken. I'm gonna just take the uh, skin off, and divide it up into serving pieces, which I'm doing now in the traditional Middle Eastern style, and add the sauce. And there it is. You could warm this up in a microwave or you could just start grabbing pieces and eating right now. And there you are, two highly flavored medieval dishes which are pretty easy to make.